Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. I guess it's one o'clock in the afternoon, right? Thought I'd jump on here and say hello to everybody. It's been the last couple weeks have been, well, probably the last seven days have been pretty crazy. We filmed a case Thursday, then we filmed another case Saturday, then we filmed another case Monday, and then we've got to film this coming Saturday. So that it has been non-stop. Sorry, pull up chat here real quick. Hopefully everybody's having a good week. So I would just thought I would jump on here and say hi to everybody. Haven't been on a live in a while. The people probably assume that I'm, make sure everybody knows I'm still alive. See Tucker in the background back there, snoozing away. Good afternoon, Samantha, Hazel, Tammy. Lots of people jumping in here now. Yeah, if you're just jumping on here, like I said, we've had a busy past seven days. We filmed Thursday, Saturday, Monday, and then we've got to film again this coming Saturday. And then I believe we're gonna take a weekend off after that. I feel like my camera's always so close to me. It's really the only place I got to put a camera. But yeah, you can see old Tucker boy back there taking his daily nap. You got Duke just staring out the window waiting for something to pass so he can bark at it. Hopefully you guys are all having a good week. This Friday we will have a brand new episode up. It is, I don't know if you guys remember back in October, right around Halloween, we did the Anchorage House. That's the one where we went live. I think we went to Big Lots and met up with the fan there. So on Friday night's episode, you know, you'll see Viva, she's dressed like a witch and the other lady's got blood all over her. That's because that was actually filmed during Halloween. So thank you, Caps Paranormal. Hope you guys are doing good as well. <clears throat> Other than that, I am just editing episodes like crazy. I went from having nothing to edit to being five episodes behind. So I'm trying to get caught up. So everybody on Patreon, rest assured, I will have an episode coming out very soon. I'm probably 90% done with it. I need to pause this video. I'm reading chat over here. Caps Paranormal, Josh, what software do you use for editing? I use Sony Vegas. I know that's a little bit old school, but that's what I learned on back in the day. And Sony Vegas is like super um, easy to work with once you navigate your way around the software. So I use Sony Vegas. Also, I, if you can see, I got my SLS camera tore apart. The uh, monitor quit working. So this is why a lot of you guys have been asking why we haven't been using the SLS camera. That is why this little beauty here just quit working. You can see, you can see the chat. So I'm trying to order another one of these. But we have to have the ones that's got the USB, if you can see that. So the SLS can hook into it. Um, yeah, I was charging this, it wouldn't come on, so I thought I would leave it charged while we filmed Monday night, but I came home and my wife said that this was making a bunch of crackling sounds, so she unplugged it. So I'm pretty sure that this is completely fried. So I've got to order another one, that way we can start using the SLS camera, which I would have loved to have the last two cases. We've got this other little mini SLS camera that we've tried using, but it's weird because if you move fast or like when you're walking and stuff, it gives you like false readings. So basically you just have to stand still. I like this one better because we can just, you know, move around the house at normal speed and we don't get all those false readings. Let's see. 
Monette. Yes, we did. That was a very exciting night. Looking forward to, I haven't even downloaded that footage yet, just from being there. Um, what was neat is, because obviously we investigate, we have like completely two different styles of investigating. I feel like some of the other groups are very high energy. Um, my brothers and I are pretty low energy. I think that's just because of our age. So it was, I was curious how that would blend with the high energy of how they do things and then us. It actually worked out well. One of the better um, collaborations we have done in a while. I know we've done a collaboration with Paranormal Quest, which we always work well with those guys. So, and plus, Colin and them had a bunch of new equipment that I wanted to check out. I've heard things about. So we were able to test out a bunch of new equipment that we've never used before, which the one piece of equipment you guys will see, at one point during the night, Colin and I, we were off in a different part of the asylum, and we literally sat there for 45 minutes and had a conversation with these three, what we think was three women, um, with this device. Like I said, I've never used it before. It's pretty good, so we're definitely looking forward to that. And plus another thing that was really good is a lot of those other teams, they don't really investigate like in pitch dark like my brothers and I do. When we investigate, we like to go lights out. We're in complete darkness. So I think that was new for Paranormal Files to do something like that. It was really, like I said, it was just a really fun, it's probably the best night I've had investigating. Um, in a while, just I think because it was just so laid back and the spirit interaction was something completely different than we've ever experienced there. We've actually investigated this place five different times. Um, so this was like completely different. So it'll blow your minds when you see that conversation. It was pretty crazy. Jen Chadwood, complete darkness so Josh can get hurt. Yes, I tend to always get hurt. I'm in the dark, hitting my head, all that stuff, so. Okay, we got a lot of questions coming in about Travis. Um, we don't have like, like I knew there would be a bunch of questions about that because obviously everybody wants to know why were we kicked out. And I wish we had like a solid answer to that. All I know is that the Travis we interviewed during the day and then the Travis that we ran into later that night were like completely two different people. Um, and I don't know exactly how to explain that. I try not to explain like every bad behavior on paranormal, but you would think that if there are things inside that house, which I have no doubt that there are, that that would have some effect on people. Um, I know there were some questions about us being kicked out because we weren't supposed to be there. We had 100% approval to be there. We always get all that way before we even show up to investigate. And then before we even turn the cameras on, we have people sign all kinds of legal documents. Um, so I don't know exactly. All I know is he had called Sean. I was in, I was inside the house. Sean and Rob were out in the car. He called. Um, what I believe happened, just from looking back on things, is he was, he was supposed to stay at somebody's house while we investigated the house. And I'm guessing for whatever reason, he had to leave that house and he had nowhere else to go. So he came back to the house. But like I said, when he came back, he was completely different. And our whole thing was, we always tried to diffuse the situation, not make it worse. So, you know, we could sit there and argue with him and you know, be confrontational, but that would probably only lead to bad things happening, which we try to avoid that. And then plus when you're in somebody else, when you're in somebody else's house, you always want to try to be respectful. Um, so unfortunately, you know, we're going to reach out to Travis. We're going to give it a little bit of time and hopefully we'll have an update for you. I don't know that we would necessarily go back to the house, although it was frustrating for me because I felt like things just started to get going when I had the microphone down the hole in the basement 
I was actually getting ready to pull the microphone out and go down to the basement when all this stuff happened. So as an investigator, you know, I would love to get back inside the house. Um, my fear is putting my brothers and I into a dangerous situation. So we'll see. We haven't decided what we're going to do. And like I said, we're going to reach back out to Travis. We always hope and pray that he's doing well. Um, we have no ill will or hard feelings towards Travis. And um, like I said, during the day, working with Travis, shooting the walk through the interview, he was just very polite, um, seemed very laid back. And then when he came back later that night, it was just total chaos. So we thought it was best to just pack up our equipment and leave before things kind of got out of hand. So that's my thoughts on that. I'm drinking tea instead of coffee right now. Where is Sean? I have no clue. Maybe Sean is at home sleeping. Crystal, yes, we will put that out. We plan on doing an episode. I know he's gonna do his episode and then we'll put out our episode. Um, it was just the three of us, Colin and then his dad. So I think we had like, it was a four, five, six. I think we had seven cameras running at one point. So there's definitely a lot of cameras running. Lori said, I just need some help. My daughter and grandson wake up crying. He is two and I want to try sage. Yeah, you can always, I mean, it's always try sage, blessing the house. Um, we always tell people not to try to communicate with it because then you kind of open up that doorway. Um, but it's not gonna hurt anything, blessing your house, doing some sage, saying some prayers. Um, I know even some people will play like um, Christian music in the background as they're sage in the house and doing their walkthrough. So try that and see if that helps. Family of six and all your years together doing this, have you ever encountered certain smells associated with Belevolent, sorry, um, or evil spirits. Yes, we have had smells. Um, typically, when we get a smell, it'll be either be like a rotten food smell or um, ammonia, and then like a sulfur smell. I know, at like the Monroe house, we've gotten a sulfur smell there, and then we've had other houses where it just smells like death. So definitely get smells in some of the darker houses. Oh, and also I've got an update with Cheryl coming very soon. I know a lot of you guys have asked about how Cheryl's doing. Unfortunately, Cheryl has ignored some of our advice and done some very disturbing things. So there will be an update with Cheryl coming very soon. I've almost got that edited and I'll get that out. Let's see if we got any more questions. Kevin says, Duke looks content waiting on squirrels. Yeah, Duke doesn't really mind the squirrels because we've got like a shit ton of squirrels outside, so he's kind of used to them. But um, it's whenever the cats go by, he gets crazy, or if somebody walks their dog down the street, just down our street at the very other end there's walking trails that goes back to like a wooded area so a lot of people walk down our street taking their dogs for walks we got larry in here he's one of our past clients he had a sulfur smell in his house before the brothers helped sometimes like even rotten eggs larry hope you and your family are all doing good 
that's kind of neat for us too is to see a lot of the families that get into the chat and leave comments and continue to watch the episodes and stuff just being able to work with them and um, Larry had a you know, he's got a great family it was an honor for us to come in and help them with their situation Yeah, and you guys, I think a lot of this stuff will make more sense. Like, I went up to when I went up to meet with Cheryl, it was kind of like a paranormal intervention, um, and I thought it would be more important to do it with her there, face to face versus over the phone or anything like that. I think a lot of people will. It'll help people understand how a lot of this stuff works, um, because a lot of people like associate demons with this creature walking around your house or crawling on your ceilings. And demonic activity can come in many different forms uh, before a haunting ever takes place. And that's one thing that I explained to Cheryl when I was working with her. So hopefully you guys get a lot out of this intervention and um, it'll help explain things. Sonia, would you guys be doing a new Chasing Evil? Yes, we are actually beginning filming on Chasing Evil next week. We shoot our first interviews, so that's going to be coming very soon. I think the first Chasing Evil episode, we're actually going to try to shoot all the interviews um, at an undisclosed location for safety reasons. But we'll see. But yeah, we're going to start filming that next week. If you guys have any chasing evil cases that are like in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, that you want us to look into, please drop a comment below and we will look into those cases. Hopefully I'm hoping to get down to Tennessee. I would love to work on the um, Summer Wells case. For some reason that case just Something keeps telling me to work on that case. It's like a gut feeling. Uh, we were working, we were talking with a spokesperson for the family and that all went like horribly bad. So we like have no inside contact to the family or anything. So if any of you guys know anybody associated with that case, please email us and we will try to reach out. I would like to set up some interviews. Um, it's always good when you go into a different state, especially working Chase and Evil, that you have people that are familiar with the area, taking you around, showing you the areas, helping you find locations. Um, let's see, what other comments do we have? Jeffrey said, go to Bobby Mackey's. We've been to Bobby Mackey's, but they are getting ready to tear down Bobby Mackey's. What I've heard is they're gonna leave the basement pretty much the same. They're gonna leave the portal to hell down the basement. And then there's a wall of like pictures and stuff that's gonna be left down there. And then they're gonna build a new structure over top of that. So Bobby Mackey's, I don't know if they begin tearing it down yet, but they're gonna build a new location there. Which is kind of sad, but if anybody's ever been like inside Bobby Mackey's, we filmed there once and it's like horrible conditions. Um, so I could see why they're tearing it down. But it is an iconic venue, not just for the paranormal, but also for um, country music and all the history there with that. Lori says, I actually came across you guys accidentally and have to say you, it was great. I love you guys. I'm a believer in the paranormal and spirits. Have you shared, have shared your videos with my family? Thank you. We appreciate all of you guys who share all of your, all of our episodes on your social media and stuff. And Jen Chadwick, where will the evil go? I'm not for sure. I'm thinking like if they build a structure on top of it, I would assume that the place would still be haunted, um, which is pretty interesting. You asked that question, the case that I'm editing right now, um, we believe there was a sanatorium 
about a quarter of a mile from this house. This is a residential case we were doing. There was a sanatorium just right down the road from this house and they tore it down recently. It has sat vacant for like 20 years. And I think the stuff that the family were experiencing inside the house is spirits that were there at the sanatorium. So I've often wondered, you know, like when they do tear these places down, you know, where do the spirits go? Do they just kind of remain there or are they like free roaming spirits at that point? I know we did Central State Hospital down in Indianapolis several years ago and they converted a lot of those buildings into apartments. And I know a lot of people have that live in those apartment buildings have had experiences. So I think it just all depends if the building's torn down and left vacant or if they built another structure on that property. Thank you, Laura Jean, become an official member. Yeah, if you guys wanna become a member to the channel, please click, click that join button down below the video here and you can become a member. I'm gonna to try to post some pictures on there later tonight. We also have Patreon. So if you wanna get early access to any of the videos and we share pictures and behind the scene stuff on Patreon, you can join there as well. I think my lack of sleep I was up Monday morning at 4 a.m. and I didn't get to sleep until Tuesday night around nine o'clock at night. Yes, we, Jeffrey, we're gonna plan on going to the Iowa Axe Murder House. We're gonna make a trip out to Iowa and hit probably the Sally House and the um, Axe Murder House. Two locations we've always wanted to get to. We just never had the opportunity to get out there. So we're gonna to try to get stuff scheduled and get out there for one weekend. Yep, Tucker's worn out. Tucker, are you still alive? Okay. Sometimes Tucker, you have to check and make sure he's still breathing. Nancy, have you ever been to the land between the lakes? We have not. Sounds interesting. Renee wants to know, Josh, how many times has something attached itself to you? Um, I believe three times. Um, yeah, three times for me, I think two times for Sean and two times for Rocky, we've had attachments. Fortunately with attachments, what we found is if we just kind of try to ignore it, give it two or three days, it seems like that negative energy kind of dissipates and things go back to normal. My house here has never, I've heard things. That's when I had one of the attachments, um, I heard a baby crying in my daughter's bedroom, which I knew everybody was at school, went in there. Obviously there's no baby in my house, but I definitely heard a baby crying in there. Um, my daughter has experienced the cupboard doors opening. Um, a lot of a lot of it when you get like the attachments from cases, a lot of it is um, nightmares, like depression, anxiety, things like that. That's probably the worst. Like the activity stuff, I could handle, but it's when you get into the depression, the anxiety, that stuff is somewhat hard to deal with. I think anybody that's ever dealt with depression and stuff, you understand what I'm talking about. Cause that could take, you know, a week or two to get through. That's probably the one thing that affects us the most with dealing with this type of stuff is, um, the emotional effects that it has on you. which is odd because you think, you know, you put yourself in a situation for 20 years where you're constantly dealing with dark negative stuff and depression and anxiety and stuff like that. You often wonder, you know, why the hell do you put yourself through it? But helping people is our main goal and why we enjoy doing it. Lori, thank you so much for the donation. When do you plan on visiting the West Coast? We hope to make it out to the West Coast soon. I have never been to the West Coast. I've been to the East Coast multiple times, but never the West Coast.
We got Deanna from Piketon, Ohio. I feel like that's down where all the murders took place, the uh, entire family. You know, we were going to do a Chase and Evil on that years ago, too, and had a lot of stuff set up, but then the arrest happened and we kind of moved away from that. Tracy, thank you so much for the donation. Really appreciate that. Leanne Roberts joined the membership. Thank you so much, Leanne. Shelly wants to know, where would you like to go outside the U.S.? Um, I feel like South Africa would be a neat place. Australia, some places in the U.K., um, Germany. I love anything that's got to do with, like, history. So I feel like places in Europe... Um, just has a ton of amazing history, so that would be neat. South Africa really wouldn't be like paranormal thing. It would just be more seeing animals. Thank you so much, Brittany. Tell your husband that we all said hello. Jennifer wants to go to Ireland and Scotland. Audria Nelson says, Josh, come to Pendle Hellbook. I have no clue where Pendle Hellbook is. Cecilia. Our good friend from Patreon has been a member on YouTube for two months. Congratulations, Cecilia. I gotta clap soft so I don't wake Tucker up. Let's see here. Blurple Dragon, the Foreman Brothers are the best. Hi, Duke and Tucker. Thank you so much for the donation. Good Vibes have been a member for four months. Congratulations. Let's see. Everyday Treasure. Who is crated? I don't know what that means. Somebody said 666. Must have 666 people watching. I feel like we like to see 666 quite a bit. Brian, Josh, didn't you once investigate Susan's house a while back? I don't believe so. If you're talking about the case we just did, her name was Susan. This is my first time ever meeting Susan and her lovely mother-in-law, Janet, which I potentially almost killed the mother-in-law during the investigate or during the walkthrough. So you guys will be interested in seeing that. It was kind of a comical, comical moment, but could have went really bad. Thank you, Donna. She's been a member for a month. Donna Howard, my son and me are big fans. Wanted to know if y'all ever take someone on investigations with you. I think we're going to try to set up some public investigations this summer. We probably haven't done a public investigation in a couple years. Um, just with our schedule and stuff, it's just been hard the last few years. So we'll try to set something up like that. Um, we'll throw out some different locations, and that way you guys can come investigate. We'll try to set up some big, cool locations. So yeah, that's kind of what we got coming up. Um, several family hauntings. So this week, like I said, will be the Anchorage Mansion. That's in Eastern Ohio. That was a really good night. And then I think the following Friday, I'll do the um, update on Cheryl video. And then starting in April, we'll have all new family hauntings coming up.
Rachel says Alton has a cool paranormal convention. We have not been to Alton in years. We had investigated out there <clears throat> several years ago, and then we did a great big public event out there at Mineral Springs Hotel. I think we probably had 200 people show up. That was like back in like 2010, maybe. So we were a lot younger back then. I got to keep track of the time because I got to get Kenzie out of school here very soon. When will you be doing a big building investigation? We just did a big building investigation Monday night. So looking forward to that. You guys will get to see. It was a really good night. Yes, Tammy, we are starting filming on Chasing Evil next week. You guys will see the first case that we're doing on Chasing Evil is absolutely crazy. Um, so we're going to, right now we're trying to get all the filming, the interviews and stuff scheduled. Uh, we're trying to do those off location because we don't feel that it will be safe for us to go to um, where these people want us to go to shoot the interviews. So sometimes, especially with like Chasing Evil, I mean, you run into real dangers. I mean, these people commit murders hide bodies and you're coming into town, you know, recording and trying to figure out what happened. Um, criminals often don't like that. So with Chase and Evil, we, we take a lot of precautions on just our safety. Brittany Taylor, thank you so much for the donation. You guys are doing God's work. You guys are so amazing. You can't ever leave YouTube. Stay safe. Well, hopefully we'll stay on YouTube for a while. I feel like when we get old, people probably stop wanting to watch us. But then we can kind of take on a role of more like behind the camera investigating and stuff. I think the only thing I have faith in is like the Warrens. You know, they investigated the paranormal for many, many, many years, so... Thank you, Cougar Kins. So yeah, that's kind of what's going on. We've been on the road quite a bit. And then, like I said, this Friday, we'll have a brand new episode, eight o'clock. Um, I don't know what else we got going on. Other than that, just really getting, trying to get caught up with the editing and stuff. Thank you, Jackie. We've got Tracy. Cheryl Shinny. Cheryl makes a very good point. The older we get, the older our audience gets. So we'll, we'll just all get old together. We'll enjoy life and we'll enjoy some paranormal investigating. Thank you, LJ, for the donation. Get Duke and Tucker some nuggets. Appreciate that. Duke, you want some nuggets? Duke. Duke, come here. You want to say hi? James Opp. If you guys were in, in your 90s, we would still watch. Thank you so much, James. Remember you said that, James, because when we get in our 90s, hopefully... God willing that I'm still alive in my 90s. Although I don't think I'll be investigating when I'm in my 90s. Hopefully I'll be retired by then and enjoying life. Duke, come here. Duke. Duke, you want a treat? Duke. Duke, you want ice cream? Duke. Come on. You want to say hi? Come here. So you're a sleepy boy today, huh? You're a sleepy boy today, aren't you? You're a sleepy boy today. You want to say hi to everybody? Mm -hmm. You got Tucker's hair all over your face, huh? So you got dog hair all over your face. Say hello, everybody. 
stay hot. Oh, yeah. That's a bad thing. Duke gets Duke gets covered in Tucker's hair, so I've always got to get the dog hair off of Duke's face. Oh. Huh, buddy? You can get up here. Come here. You can get up here. Come on. Here's my boy. Thank you, my baby. That's my plan here in a little bit after I get Kenzie out of school is give Duke a bath. When Duke starts to get dusty, I know it's time for a bath. I feel like we've all grown on YouTube together. I think when we started, we didn't even have, we started investigating the paranormal, we didn't even have kids back then, so. Margaret says, hello from Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania, Sunbury. We've never been there. I did not find Duke a doggy sitter yet. So if we go on vacation or something, not quite for sure what I'm gonna do with Duke yet. Right now we're down to one car. Our other car is in the mechanic getting fixed, which I absolutely hate. I think it cost me close to $2,000 for a water pump, which is beyond crazy to me, but I'm not a mechanic. So hopefully we'll get the car back today. Sucks being down to one car. Thank you so much, Donna Desmond. Thank you for all you guys do. Have Taco Bell on me. We appreciate it, Donna. So yeah, that's another good question for you guys. You can drop a comment below too is, what do you think happens to spirits when they tear these places down? With like the one residential case we did, they tore down an asylum about a quarter mile from the house. And then what do you think is gonna happen to the spirits at Bobby Mackey's when they tear that down? Rose said that she'll dog sit for Duke, but she's in West Virginia. Thank you so much, Terry Gurton, for the donation. Really do appreciate that. I'm always, I'm kind of nervous about the whole dog sitter thing because I'm always worried that Duke will get loose somehow. Um, three different occasions, Duke has broken his chain in the backyard. Fortunately, he stayed in the backyard and I've found him and it's happened like at night every time. But I'm always afraid if somebody lets Duke out to pee and he breaks loose and they're not paying attention. Um, you guys know how it is. Like if you take your kid to a babysitter's house, you're always nervous. That's kind of how I am with Duke. So I don't know. We'll figure something out. Figure something out or just not take vacations anymore. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? If he knows when it's time to get Kenzie, he gets excited. Duke, you get your leash. You get your leash. Go get it. I'll show you what I trained Duke to do. Duke, go get your leash. Go get your leash. Go get it. Get your leash. Go get it. Go get your leash. Duke, go get your leash. Go get it. It's on the couch. Go get your leash. Go get it. Figures once we're alive, he won't do it. Go get your leash. Go get it. Go get it. Wanna go bye-bye? Go get it. You wanna go bye-bye? Go get your leash. Go get your leash. Go get it. Go get your leash. You wanna go bye-bye? You want to get Kenzie? Where's Kenzie at? Where's Kenzie, huh? Where's Kenzie at? 
Go get your leash. I promise you he gets he gets his leash. He just won't do it because you guys are all watching and you guys make him nervous. Dude, go get your leash. We're not going bye-bye until you go, go, get, go get it. Go get your leash. You want to go get it? Okay, you're not going anywhere then. You're going to stay here and you're going to go to your cage if you don't go get it. And you won't go get to get Kenzie. I'll shoot video of him getting it. Go get it. It's in there. It's in there. Go get it. See, I'll shoot some video to show you guys that he does go get his leash. That's the one thing I trained him how to do because we could never find his leash. Because um, go try to go get it now. Yeah, we're going to jump off here and go get Kenzie. Um, I'll shoot a little video real quick when we get done here. If you guys want to see Duke get his leash. And then um, don't forget Friday night, 8 o'clock, brand new episode coming out. The Anchorage Mansion. Pretty fun night. Wasn't it? Hmm. So everybody have a good week. I just wanted to jump on here and kind of update everybody what we've been doing and what we've been up to. And we'll see you guys in the live chat Friday night, eight o'clock. Don't forget, thank you guys all from my brothers and I for your support and your friendship. Everybody, please have a good, safe week and we will see you soon.